joined as we are each week by our favorite Reverend, Reverend Greg Dorst, who is the Senior Minister for the Claremont Center for Spiritual Living. And Greg, in past shows, you've shared with us how the way we think can and does affect our lives. And if we change the way we think, we can change our lives. But does that same effect happen on our bodies as well? Do we have control with our thoughts over our body? Well, we do, Ron. There is a mind-body connection in the sense that our thoughts do affect the way our bodies function. Now, I can give you a, an example that nobody can disagree with. If you are constantly thinking about, let's say, ice cream in mm -hmm. an obsessive way, you're going to find your way to ice cream, you know, 31 flavors or some other store that sells it and you bring it home and you, you might even eat the entire half gallon yourself. How did you know? Yeah, well, look at uh, <laughs> it. You're legendary. But you're right, obviously. Yeah, I mean, that thought. That and that goes all the way through to me eating it and then gaining perhaps weight that I don't want, thought to body. Absolutely. Well, that, that's pretty obvious. You know, that's pretty obvious. But, but when you start thinking about uh, how other thoughts might affect your body, things like grief and anger and, and fear and all of those things that just ball us up inside and create a stressful body and create stressful situations for us, does that affect your body? It's got to, I would think. It, you, you know, it's natural, I think, to say, of course, it has to. How could it not affect your body? And we show it out picturing in areas like ulcers. Mm -hmm. And we believe that. We believe that our, our thoughts, our fears, our stress levels can cause ulcers in our stomach. How, how does that happen? Yeah. Well, it, can we take it further? Can we see where our thoughts might affect other areas of our body, things that we aren't really aware of? So we really have to pay attention to what it is we're doing, how it is we're thinking, because those thoughts could be affecting the way our body is functioning. So really, what one of the recurring themes I hear from you is to the degree that we can learn to mind our mind or be atten attentive to our thoughts, we truly can start controlling our realities. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's a medical doctor who just passed away recently, a man by the name of Dr. David Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And he used to give uh, live lectures and he would always talk about his knee. And he would say things like, oh, you mean I have to love my knee now? I have to change my belief system around my knee? I have to think thoughts that might be healing in nature? He said, I guess I have to do that. <laughs> yes, but, the, but changing the way we think does truly change our lives. And we can learn more about that every Sunday at the Spiritual Center, 1030 a.m., 10 a.m. meditation. That's right, Claremont Center for Spiritual Living. All right, look forward to seeing you all there. Don't go away. We will be right back. Senior Minister for the Claremont Center for Spiritual Living joins us as he does each week to guide us through the process of living a happier and more fulfilling life. And Reverend Greg, there is so much really scary stuff in the news right now. I mean, just all over the world. How do we see all of that? And, and you know, it causes a certain amount of fear, and some of it probably should, but still maintain that sense of peace within ourselves. It, can that even be done? Ron, we see so much today that does not look like peace in the exterior of our lives. We have 
what looks like war in all you know, of the Middle Eastern areas. We have strife in areas that uh, are in Northern Africa. And it looks like there, at the macro level, there is a very unpeaceful world brewing. The and trick even is- even closer to home. I might it, have an unpeaceful work environment. Well, you might, but see, this, that's something you have control over. And you always have control over how it is that you deal with that peace at the macro level not occurring, see? Now, these, the things that are happening in other parts of the world or maybe even down your street that, uh, that might be disturbing uh, are things that are just happening and they're happening in a way that may put you in fear. But do you really have to react to that fear? Well, you might have inside of you, deep inside of you, in your subconscious mind, some feelings around this being the only life there is that this being all that uh, you get on either this earth or anywhere else. But the absolute truth is, Ron, that you are one with spirit. You are one with God. You are one with that creative source. That thing that brought you into existence by merely creating you out of itself, and you are divinely protected as a result of that. So that peace that you can instill in yourself personally can be guided by that knowing. So you can find this place to be the, the eye of the hurricane, so to speak, that regardless of what's going on around you, it's a choice to still find and keep that inner sense of peace. Well, sure. You know, and I think that's the essence of real courage. I do, too. Yeah. And we certainly don't want a life that's led by fear. Reverend Greg, every Sunday, Claremont Center for Spiritual Living services at 10.30 a.m. with a meditation that begins at 10. All right. I'm there most Sundays. Come on by. Say hi to either of us. I have it on Good Word. He's there pretty much every Sunday. Uh, so come on by and say hello. Don't go away. We will be right back. that time of the show when we say hello once again to our favorite happiness guru, Reverend Greg Dorst, who is a senior minister at the Claremont Center for Spiritual Living. And Greg, one of the only things that I believe are really guaranteed in life is change. And change seems to be something that as, as humans, we don't always do so well with. Well, we don't. We try and make things stay the same, in fact. And there are a lot of people who say that uh, they like change, but then they really don't. You know, somebody comes into their house and moves something and all of a sudden it doesn't feel right. So they immediately figure that out and move it back. But change can be hard for many people and a strategy probably is necessary. I was in a pizza place the other day and I saw, it was a takeout pizza place and I saw a little sign that said, change is difficult, leave yours here. I like that. And I thought, well, you know what? Just a little mindset change. Mm -hmm. uh, that change is difficult uh, to change is natural and easy and part of an evolvement that we need to participate in fully can be helpful. It, it really, and I think you're right. It has more to do with how we view it than anything else. You know, change is not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's a thing. And it's what we decide to do with it that really makes it. And without change, I don't know that you can have growth. Yeah, it's it's assured that change is going to happen. Let's make that let's, let's make the best out of that change. You know, let's have a direction. Let's plant that seed for something that we really want to see in our lives. So we have that opportunity every time that we think a thought. We have the opportunity to think a different thought than we've thought in the past. You think a different thought a different action occurs and you receive a different experience. So it changes everything when you decide to take a different tact in the way you think. And that, that is so true. You know, and people go, well, but that's not my real thought and that's okay. It may not be now, 
But if you keep doing it, eventually it will be. Exactly. You, you can practice, you know, appropriate thinking. And you can do it by weeding out those thoughts that tend to be uh, negative or judgmental or about somebody else. We or all, yourself. Or yourself, yeah. You know, we all have conversations that never exist, except in our heads. Exactly. And someone said to me once, we would never even think about talking to other people as badly as we often talk to ourselves. Yeah. Reverend Greg, every Sunday, Claremont Center for Spiritual Living, service time is? 10.30 in the morning, 10 o'clock, meditation time. All right. Come on out. I'm there most Sundays. Come by and say hello. Reverend Greg, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Ron. We will be right back. that time of the show when we say hello to our own personal happiness guru, and I'm talking about none other than Reverend Greg Dorse, the senior minister at the Claremont Center for Spiritual Living. So Greg, I wanted to ask you, so often we delude ourselves about our lives and the way we live them. We're just not honest with ourselves. How do we cut through that kind of negative clutter and perception? Ron, Ron, you're right about that. You know, truth is uh, kind of an interesting subject. We lie to ourselves, studies have shown, up to 30% of the time. And that's not just the, the little unconscious or subconscious lies we tell ourselves, you know, that have popped up because of our upbringing or because of relationships that we've had with our uh, parents or teachers or friends that say things like, uh, I'm not good enough. Uh, you know, this is, I'm not good looking enough, I, I'm not good, a good enough conversationalist. Those little lies that we tell ourselves are, are deep within us. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of work that has to be done to, to deal with those. But we also lie to ourselves on another level that's just, it's very interesting. You know, we tell ourselves that we're unopinionated, we're non-judgmental, that we're nice to everybody. And so we end up doing things like not telling people the truth when they ask us a question that requires us to give an opinion, an opinion that we have of something. And so we enter into those kind of tacit agreements where, where we will not tell the truth about something. And sometimes that's a good thing because it spares people's feelings, but most of the time we just get in the habit of lying. And you know, it's interesting because I've always pondered the difference between the white lie and the purposeful knowing lie. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much of it ties back to intent. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody who is really consciously aware wants to hurt anybody, you know, because the truth uh, can be very brutal. Uh, you know, we all know the, the, the little child that pulls her mommy's skirt and says in the store and says, Mommy, that woman is fat. I mean, that, it, it's, th that's truly brutal. The child doesn't know any better. Right. But uh, it is the truth as well. So what do you say to the child? You, know, you, you turn around and say, don't say that. Well, I don't know if there's a better way to deal with that or not, but we started at an early age not being able to say things that you might be calling little white lies. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we lie about uh, people's appearances, about the way we feel about the things that they've done all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we need to build an awareness of and listen to what's going on in our heads and strive for a little more honesty? I think there's a middle ground there, Ron. I think that we can be honest and we can also not be brutal. You know, I think that what we can do is find the goodness in what it is that we see about one another, and we can talk about that. I we can like have that. a genuine conversation about, about that. Find the goodness. I like that. Don't go away. We will be right back. <laughs> 